Hey there everyone, this is Rajat and I wish you guys a very happy new year and that is 2020. And since I ask you guys to ask me some questions and I would do my first Q&A on this channel. So here I am today and thankfully some of you guys have come forward and asked me questions. So let's start. So the very first question we have got is how to write production level code and how to master react.js. Thank you Manish for asking this question. Now to answer your query, there are certain things you can employ in order to write production level code. That is linting, that is prettifying your code and also writing some unit tests and integration tests. Apart from that, there are certain things you can do like putting in proper code to monitor how your code performs in the production environment. So if I talk about React, right? So you have got ESLint in order to lint the code. You have got prettier JS in order to prettify the code as per your company's standard. Then you have to write test. For that, you can use the testing frameworks like Jest in order to write unit test and integration test and UI test as well. Apart from that, there are several libraries and frameworks you can use in order to monitor if something fails in the production environment, right? If you have got some bug, if you have got some undefined condition, you can use these monitoring frameworks or SAS product in order to log those errors, which you can come to at some later point in time and debug the code from then on. Azure offers such services. I know about Azure because I use that in my company's environment. So Azure offers such services, but I am sure that there are other logging services and monitoring services like that. Google Strike Driver is also a logging service which uh, many production uh, softwares use in order to monitor how their software is performing and whether they are encountering any bug or not. So that is the answer to your first question. Now how to master React.js? So mastering something is an ongoing journey. It never completes. So if you master something, there will be more and more things that will be introduced by the React.js community. And then you will again find yourself back at the square one, right? So it's an ongoing process. Just learn whatever you feel like learning. Just learn the basics from the React.js website and then just try to build projects. And based on what your requirements are, just try to build those skills because you cannot learn each and every single thing that is out there related to React.js. So you have to pick and choose. So that is the answer to your question, how to master. Okay. Now, Harit Abhishek Ji asked, please do a video about part to become full stack developer. What technologies are trending now? How much deep knowledge required in each technology to be a successful full stack developer? Okay. So there are a couple of paths you can take in order to become a full stack developer. So there is a Java path, there is a JavaScript path, there is a Python path. So it depends upon what language you feel comfortable in, right? So you have to first of all try these languages and stack. I'm not asking you to build full fledged product just to get some idea. You have to try these products out, which feels more natural to you. Now, for example, let's suppose you have picked up the Python stack. So Django will be the framework with which you would be building the backend. And then you will use JavaScript, HTML and CSS, those front end technologies in order to build the front end. If you choose JavaScript, then you are going to write JavaScript from backend to the front end, right? If you would pick up Java, then you are going to employ some framework like Spring Boot, or J2E in order to build the backend and then you are again going to rely upon front end technologies like HTML, CSS and JavaScript in order to build your front end or you will find some way to serve or to write templates of those front end technologies from Java itself, right? So you are going to do things like that. Now, how to become full stack developer? How can you get started? That is the main question. So 
the very first step of becoming a full stack developer is write a fully working website on your own once you have a crystal clear idea about what the front end is what the back end is how database interacts with the back end and how the data get served to the front end and how you store data how you secure data once you have that end to end knowledge then you can plug and play various stacks out right so if you do not like django you can swap it out with some other framework like node.js to build the back end but still the front end remains the same but what you have to learn are the concepts are the underlying concepts like the front end back end and how the data transfers over the wire what happens when you receive some data how you pass the data what is json what are databases and things like that once you know the entire picture moving between the stacks or the technologies is very easier as compared to learning the underlying concept so it is going to take some time so build a complete end to end product on your own where you have a command over everything the back end the front end the network transfer the security and everything in between everything your application does you know what is happening in any particular stage so that is how you can start becoming a full stack developer now manish badgeri asked can we use jquery in angular 7 is it a good practice to use now if you are using angular if you are using react if you are using view using jquery is not a best practice it is not advisable or recommended if you are using these frameworks just rely on simple and vanilla javascript or the facilities that are provided by these frameworks because these frameworks are known to be not that compatible with other libraries you cannot mix react and angular with ease right so it is going to take some significant amount of efforts right you certainly do not want to go down that way so just do away with jquery and rely on whatever angular 7 provides you along with whatever you can program using vanilla javascript because with es6 and es7 introduced in javascript land you can do pretty much jquery has done over the years using just vanilla javascript right you do not actually need jquery these days right because the sole intention behind this jquery library was to give people the tools that they require in order to get done with their work right so those were just the tools now es6 and es7 give you those tools as well right so use those tools from es6 or es7 or the modern javascript instead of relying upon jquery okay so i got these three questions apart from that i've got some questions on my channel over the period of time which i would like to address so hemant vishkarma asked like uh, he has completed mechanical engineering in 2019 and he is from yeah he is getting job offers which are starting from 8000 indian rupees only and he wants to switch from mechanical to software development so hemant you can do that if you want to switch from mechanical to software development i think it is easier for you to seek a job in some service based industry first of all so that will allow you to segue into the proper software development field with ease because first of all you have mentioned that you are getting offers that are starting from 8k so the starting salaries in companies like tcs infosys uh, is in the range between 12 to 15k first of all so that's an improvement right there right and also they just do not differentiate between the streams you are coming from so even if you are a mechanical guy it does not matter much to them you can easily make that switch so once you are in those camps right devote all of the time that you are getting there to build up your software developer skills and once you have that in you once you know that now i have gathered enough knowledge about software development start appearing for the interviews of other hardcore software development company and i think that will be comparatively easier for you to do because by doing this thing you will allow yourself to earn while you are learning 
and you will give yourself some time which is actually required in order to build these skills because since you have studied mechanical you certainly won't be having the skills that are required for software development at this point of time you certainly need some time to match up to that level right you need some time so what is better than earning and getting paid and still getting some good amount of time to learn and build the skills you actually require for the job you aspire to do in future right so these are the things so i think that you should first of all try to get yourself placed in companies like tcs infosys wipro and things like that okay then once you are there study hard for the concepts related to do software development and once you have that start appearing for the interviews okay so that is one path which i can suggest you and i have seen guys doing this uh, this thing over the years and it totally works so shri ranga sai asked bro how to get into cyber security so for getting into anything related to the security field you have to get yourself up to speed with what sort of cyber threats are the most popular out there so you can start with this ovs top 10 security vulnerability list so you can go through these injections and broken authentication and these sort of threats and just try to learn more about these things then you can create some stand alone examples about how you can recreate these things and you know how can you mitigate these things so based on that you will get a crystal clear idea about whether you are first of all interested in cyber security because from the surface it may look a uh, very exotic or very lucrative but it is a very boring job at the end of the day because uh, it is not a glamorous job i can tell you that from uh, what i have seen and what i actually know about the cyber security thing so it's a boring job and you require a lot of focus a lot of consistency that should go towards finding things out finding the root cause of why this vulnerability actually exists and what can be done in order to find a uh, you know cure or a solution to this vulnerability and how easily or how fast can we take the vulnerability fix to the market okay so there are certain things which you have to consider and these things are not very glamorous or not very you can say kind of fun to do you might be that guy who finds fun in these things but quite a lot of people do not find fun in these things i personally am not interested in cyber security it is something i have to do in order to keep my software secure right but if you are trying to become a software security expert or a cyber security expert you will be dealing with all of these issues which other people are not willing to pick up on a day to day basis right so go through this particular list try to uh, learn more about these things try to read more about uh, the other vulnerabilities that are getting introduced there is one more critical vulnerability index thing which you can have a look at so cve is a database right it's a database of vulnerabilities that have been found across the wide spectrum of software industry and it is like a central repository of critical vulnerabilities so based on this software companies introduce some sort of uh, what can i say solution right so once they have discovered a cve it gets a proper number which identifies what this is all about and then the uh, software companies like oracle and java and things like that introduce patches related to this particular cve id right so then other security professionals fix or apply those patches in order to make their software infrastructure resilient or full proof from these vulnerabilities so this is also one thing you can have a look at right so but uh, start from this ovs top 10 and cve 
database and then you can figure things out on your own because i am not a security professional but i know a little bit about security and i keep on reading such stuff because hey it is actually essential for my job one more thing i would like to mention is that that quite a lot of you comment about my accent now see i am aware that my accent is sometimes incomprehensible for the westerners or for other folks as well but this is something i have like not much control over i am trying to improve things but i am constantly failing at that because from time to time i get comments like your accent is not comprehensible i was not able to understand what you were saying and things like that and for that i'm really sorry if you came to my video and you did not get the value out of it i'm really sorry for that but yes i am working on my accent and my english speaking skills but can see that i am not reaching anywhere i just am trying but i am not reaching anywhere but be assured that i am trying my best in order to make myself clear to you guys so that is one thing i would like to mention and i will keep on working on this skill okay so again the same story crazy ideas completed be mechanical and would like to go to it industry the same advice i gave to heman uh, the same advice applies to you as well okay okay so this one is having two plus years of experience in coding but he or i mean she swati more okay she does not like coding so she is asking for government and private sector jobs swati i cannot help you with that because i am pretty much limited to the software uh, development industry i am not very knowledgeable about these government and private sector things um, really sorry okay manish asked like uh, best website to prepare for interviews like uh, there is geeks for geeks but i do not recommend that thing but if uh, that works out for you that's okay but it totally depends upon what sort of preparation you are trying to do if you are trying to uh, appear for companies like google microsoft then geeks for geeks and lead code and youtube would do but if you are trying to learn some practical and real world software development i mean i'm not implying that uh, companies like google and microsoft uh, don't do actual and real world software development they actually do they are just the gold standards of software development but yeah the skills you would require at the end of the day for companies like google and microsoft are totally different from what you require for working at some other not known company right you will still be doing software development but that software development will be significantly uh different from what you are going to do at companies like google and microsoft so definitely the level of preparation and the kind of preparation would be different in those two cases okay so for companies like google geeks for geeks introduction to algorithms and lead code and youtube for watching the explanation to the algorithms you did not understand from the books okay for other companies that are doing some like uh, web development or mobile development related stuff again youtube dev.2 medium.com and i would say that that one particular website free code camp so you can learn from these resources okay just started learning python for devops i have to look into this because python for devops is something i do not have re much idea about okay so yeah i have answered these questions okay so i guess like i have entertained most of the clearing questions that i got over the period of last six months if you like this video please give this video a thumbs up and if you like software development and if you like learning more about development and computer science related stuff please subscribe to this channel because i talk about software development and computer science in general on weekly basis on this channel so there is my elevator pitch right there and i hope that 2020 will bring a lot of happiness into your lives and with that this is a guy rajat signing off and i see you guys over in the next video